This is 90.3 The Rock, WUTK-FM, live in studio and on UTTV, The Rock Unplugged. And my name is Benny Smith. Glad to have you along for the ride here uh, on this uh, Wednesday afternoon. That was music from Paleface and Just About to Burn, the name of the CD, A Different Story. And that cut little by little coming from uh, that CD right there. Uh, let's see. Hit me on the other one. There we go. Yeah, from that CD right there. Uh, it's a really, really fine CD called A Different Story. How are you both? Good, very good. Very dry, thank goodness. Stay dry. Yeah, yeah. One, yeah. one victory today. Yeah, very much so. When when PF and Bellface got into our uh, parking garage, he said he was just glad to be indoors and out of the rain. And I know the feeling because, uh, like I said, they followed this whole front all the way up from Nashville, and uh, we're glad to have him back in Knoxville. And uh, you've been to Knoxville before, though, right? Am I right? Oh, uh, we came through a couple times. We did the. Uh, the radio show in the morning. Yeah. The, uh, Blue, Play Blue Play Special, special WDVX, yeah, and, downtown, uh, which yeah, you're going to so, do again Thursday, yeah. no, Friday. No? We're doing it again on Friday. Friday, yeah, no, yeah. Friday. Thank you. Friday and morning, we'll be back. So. Fantastic CD. It's called A Different Story. Definitely got a lot of folk twinge to it, uh, some rock and roll twist to it. Um, it's something that um, uh, I've been reading uh, the press and the websites, and there's been some really neat descriptions of Pell Face of your music and what you sound like and kind of some uh, interesting, uh, uh, I guess, uh, comparisons. One person said they kind of like Tom Waits and Kim Dill of the Pixies making quirky acoustic folk together. Um, and then what was the other one? It was a comparison, I think, of, yeah, Tom Waits, Hank Williams, and the Beatles in a blender, says Harp Magazine. So, uh, that's good company. Yeah, it is. That's, that's pretty nice <laughs> yeah, to be rubbing know, shoulders with. Uh, yeah. I'll take it. Very cool. Very, very I don't cool. read reviews, so this is the first I'm hearing all this. Mo kind of takes Smart care of it. Smart man. Mo, and Mo, thank you so much for helping out as well. You've done a great job helping arrange this uh, interview today as well. Um, how, long has, uh, how long has this record been out? A different story. How long you headed out now? Uh, Yes. I'm sorry? We released it in January. Okay, cool. It's been out of January 2008. So well, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, you started uh, back about the same time that uh, uh, I was hitting about uh, my stride as a graduate student here at this college radio station years ago. We've got a little bit of a Knoxville tie-in to talk about as well from those days gone by. And then we're going to catch you up to get you up to scene with the anti-folk scene in New York. A lot to talk about. But first, we're going to let you do what you do best, and let's play a tune. What are you going to do? Uh, this is a song called Where You Want to Be, and I actually wrote this song for Buddy Scott Avett. Oh, very cool. From the Avett Brothers, who they're good friends with from over in the Piedmont area of North Carolina. Great band. It's Paleface Live in studio with Mo. And now, is this just about to burn, or is this Paleface with Mo? Oh, uh, this is just Paleface. We left, when we moved from Brooklyn, we left. The rest of the guys, they wanted to stay. So right, no, right. We're just pale faces. Okay, cool. Well, we're just glad to have you here. 90.3 The Rock Live and on UTTV, The Rock Unplugged. Go for it. Cross the Carolina line. Headed north through the pines Back to that city that just climbs and climbs and climbs And makes me think of all this precious time Thought my sense of direction was better But I guess the rain has left me looking north And thinking south like I'd be better off if I had just remained But soon you'll be Where you want to be Soon you'll be Where I do I've got admiration But it's more than admiration It's a knowing feeling That you're going where you want And with that must come a great sense of peace But as we cross back over And I tell you without 
any drama that I haven't got a clue where any of it will end up for me. Still I can see that soon you'll be where Very, very cool stuff. Paleface live in studio on 90.3 The Rock and on UTTV, The Rock Unplugged. Paleface PF, as we're going to refer mm-hmm. to you as the rest of the interview. Did you grow up in the city or in around New York? Or where did oh, you yeah, work? definitely around New York. Yeah. Uh, in Connecticut, actually, but there's nothing really in Connecticut. So yeah. It's kind of like New York City is just sort of outer New York the city. magnet for everything. Right. What did, you know, with all the sounds and vibes and things going on in the city... Who in the world did you grow up listening to? What, what, what influenced you up to the point where we're going to get you meeting Daniel Johnston? Um, well, just watching videos. I think yeah. watching MTV, that's how I found out that I was creative because yeah. back when they played I would videos. watch videos all the time. Yeah. And then I had a record collection, like my brother's records and old records, you know, classic rock that I would listen to. And there was no videos for those. So in right. my head, I would make up videos. And that's... That was the beginning of me being creative as a person. I right. Guess. Very cool. Very cool. Back when MTV actually played music and music right, videos. Right. Yeah. Or when the it, reality. Yeah. Know, yeah. When it was pretty cool back in the day. You want to call it. Yeah. <laughs> and then in 1989, you met a man who uh, is amazingly creative, oh, yeah. has an amazing story, um, you know, and, and has had his ups, has had his downs. But again, it's just a, a very influential and creative man. And that's Daniel Johnston. Did you meet him in New York City or where? How did you yeah, guys? Yeah, um, Daniel was on his trip that uh, they spoke about in the film, which they never contacted me about the film. <laughs> so I didn't even know. I had to go see it in the theater. Um, but he, uh, he had had his problems with Steve Shelley, the drummer for Sonic Youth. Yep. And I had a buddy who had a fanzine at the time who knew the whole story and called me and said, Daniel needs a place to stay. And I was just like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. definitely. So we hung out, and that was just a complete eye-opener for me. I mean, that right. really just, after that, I started to write songs. And, yeah. you know, I, I mean, Can't it's the family tree. Everybody says that, like, Beck took from me, but I took from Daniel. So right. that's kind of how it, the you know, I, was, I started forward. copying Daniel, and then Beck started doing the same thing with me. And, right. You know, do you, are you in touch with Daniel today at when, all? You know, a couple times I see him here and there, but yeah. it's Dan, being in touch with Daniel is not, Exactly. It's yeah, not it's something. tough. I know he lives, I think, with his parents or around a uh, house with his parents yeah, now. Yeah, he's, but, you know, yeah. I mean, it, how he is in the film is kind of how he is. Yeah, you know, yeah, so absolutely. You know, the lithium did a job on him. Right, right. Well, you did go on, and you had a roommate, I guess, by the name of Beck, who you guys... Right. Uh, hit it off, and like you said, definitely Daniel Johnston influenced 
you and then in turn and you also influence Beck and and what you're doing now sounds and what you did back then it, that's a lot of what Beck did especially in his early stages of his career right I mean right uh, more the when I met Beck he um he was doing folk blues yeah and I thought he was great at it I loved was it. he playing the vacuum cleaner <laughs> no, he wasn't. I, you know, like, he I don't know. He, we kind of had a falling out, and he went to L.A. LA and I stayed yep. in New York. That's so when he started doing that like stuff. His, after that, you know, I was aware of it, but I didn't really follow what he was doing. Yeah. But when we were buddies and hanging around, he was really good. I thought he was great at that. Yeah. Loved yeah. Him. You know, he would do all those old folk blues songs, like right. Belly and Woody Guthrie and all that kind of stuff. And still... See, you know, still comes into some of his records every now and then. I mean, he really moved more toward the dance and groove and funk type thing. But yeah. uh, about the same time, you and Beck were piled up a, a man who uh, is synonymous with a lot of great music and uh, who uh, was a kind of a scout and a journalist and a member of the whole Warhol scene back in the day, but a guy who helped discover uh, some of my favorite bands in the world, the MC5, the Ramones, the Stooges. Danny Field stumbled upon you, I guess, what, on the east side of New York City? I mean, where, where did that happen, man? You, he the came big to an open mic. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know who he was, and he introduced himself, and somebody said, yo, that's Danny Fields. He matched the Ramones. Yeah. Danny and, Says, uh, so, like you said, the song Danny Says. Yeah. Well, he, uh, he ended up, I ended up uh, signing with him, and he managed me for about eight years. Wow. Until... Uh, uh, you know, he he would. He, I put him through a lot. Yeah. In those days, I was drinking. So. Right. I think one of the final conversations was after putting up with all those guys that you just mentioned. He just didn't have it in him anymore to put right, up with right. crazy rock and roll. That's a lot to go through, man. It really is. Yeah, I mean, so wow, MC Five alone and everything that they were involved with and then right, I heard all those moons. stories even before please kill me I read yeah. I heard all those stories before I read about them I mean, Fred Sonic Smith's one of my rock and roll heroes of all time man um, and then of course in 91 you signed with Polydor in 92 comes the Knoxville connection you went out on tour and you were paired up with Knoxville's own Judy Bats that's right and yeah, we did a tour together yeah and you said you guys hit it Probably off backstage together. but on stage the crowd just it just like we were talking off mic you know, sometimes you just went to shows and scratched your head and went, wait a minute, they're both talented, but they're just totally different. Well, the running joke was uh, that I was, I, was going, I was off the road with them and going on the road with Slayer, and that was their <laughs> joke about it. So, so, that yeah. sounds like them. It sounds you know, like Jeff High School. It, it's two crowds. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, speaking about a career that uh, record labels really didn't do a lot of favors, the Judy Bats as well. And But then you got paired up with Billy Bragg. Just amazing. Amazing. That was, yeah, that was definitely fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Then you, uh, along with a whole lot of others, got into the whole record company, Rigamaroo, and they drop you. And uh, you go on and, and do some things, I guess, still in New York City, still making some music. And and then like well, I, I managed to get another deal with Sire, and yeah. that was uh, the end, kind of the end of uh, the alternative generation. So, right, right. Um, and then I fell off because I had my own problems. So right, I didn't right. make music for a few years. And like I said, I'm, I, we're, we're happy that you're sitting here with us today. Because I'll tell you, brother, I'm happy about <laughs> it, too. I really am. Well, we very much so are, too, as well, man. And uh, we've got Paleface in studio with us here on 90.3 The Rock and UTTV The Rock Unplugged. My name is Benny Smith. Assisting Paleface is the lovely and talented Mo on the drum kit. How about another song before we come back and bring you up to modern day times and uh, talk a little bit about the gig tonight? All right. Girl, you understand it's just too hard to fake it. Maybe we should take a break and go out.